Welcome into the latest edition of ESPN FC. I'm Dan Thomas, joined in the studio today by Craig Burley and Shaka. Here's so we'll kick things off with Spurs with a 2 0 victory over Nottingham Forest. Harry Kane with both goals in this game. Uh, Spurs with a comfortable victory, then taking all three points to maintain their unbeaten start to the season. Uh, for more on this, let's welcome in Don Hutchinson to the show. Spurs just keeping it going, Don. They are, Dan. Um, it's not pretty, apart from the Moreland against Southampton on match day one. It's been pretty tight. Um, I thought the game today, in spells, they were lucky to get something out of it. I thought Forrest were really good between both boxes, but defensively quite poor. Never looked like they were going to score, but as soon as they get the lead, Antonio Conte, three games, I think, on the spin, he's whipped Son off and he's put Richarlison on for something different. And they've got a real squad, Perisic and Cessignon battling for that left hand side wing back play so you look at the squad Basuma in the middle of the park coming off the bench they are strong Dan yep and especially when you've got Kane up front banging them in early doors this time yeah it, it was it was really easy for, for, for Spurs and as Don mentioned I don't think uh, Forrest troubled them too too much defensively the the only criticism I guess you, you can levy at, at, at Spurs in this one is that it just felt so it felt so Antonio Conte that even against newly promoted opposition, you get an early goal and then you just sit back. Put numbers behind the ball and, and Forrest just don't have enough talent to, to hurt them or, or, or worry Spurs in, in, in any way. And the game just kind of played out slowly, a little bit drearily. Um, if, you are, if we are talking about one of the best teams in English football, I, I just thought they could have been a little bit more adventurous, a little bit more convincing. Uh, just taking a look at how things stand then in the table. They're, they're sitting third at the moment, Don, unbeaten. Kind of the ideal start that Conte would have wanted. Yeah, I heard him after the game, Dan, and he was quite bullish and he was quite... I think what he was saying was, he was saying, you know, previously uh, with different managers in a, in a game where it was quite hostile at Forest and the atmosphere was really good. He was suggesting that previous Forest sides would have probably lost that game. So you can tell what he's brought. He's added that bit of steel and he's added his nous and he's, he's good football brain. Defensively, he's very solid. So you can see where he wants to work from. He wants to work from potential clean sheets. He knows he's got the firepower. He's got so much and so many riches at the top end of the pitch. If they're not playing well, and I think the good thing about him is I think he's keeping players on their toes. Like I said, in the last three games, Son's been brought off. Mm. And I even think he would do it with Harry Kane. If Harry Kane was out of form, I get the feeling Son's the type of manager that says, you ain't going to play. Because it's the greater good. It's, it's, it's the results that matter, not the individual. So you're looking at an 11, you're looking at a squad, you're looking at a manager who you feel as though are going all in the right direction. Because they're not playing amazing football, down, but they're strong. And you think defensively, you know, they might give up one or two chances. Middle of the park, some good players in the middle of the park. Ben Tanker is a really good signing. Kulazewski's hit the ground running like he did at the end of last season. But they've still got Kane. They've still got Son. They've now got Richarlison. They've got weapons and they've got goals. What did you... You meant... Oh, what do you want to say, sir? Nothing. Uh, you mentioned Richarlison, Don. <laughs> uh, obviously, he's been criticised by some of the showboating we saw when he came on. Do you have a problem with it? No, not really, Dan. I think uh, if I'm in a Tottenham camp, I would have done the same. I've done this before, just to wind people up. That's the type of player he is. If you're Forrest, you're fuming. You put the tackle in. I've been in Nico Williams' shoes, by the way. When you see someone doing that, you think, right, I'm not having that. I'm going to go right through you. So I, just, I think it's one of them, Dan. I think unless Craig's you know, going to disagree with me, I think we've all done it. Or if you're playing with Richarlison, you don't mind it. But if you're Forrest, you're fuming because you're thinking he's taking one or two liberties. Can't even get a one then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, back to Real Madrid. <laughs> yeah, about that via the lead performance in Barcelona. Look, go back to one point about the way Tottenham play. He's Italian, Antonio Conte. Right. When have they ever been bothered about flair? Right. Okay. Let's be honest about it. Okay, and Serie A now, and you know Maurizio Sarri and one or two others. It's become a bit more expansive. I'll give you that. But as a generalisation, and I love to generalise, that's the way, at times, over the years, particularly Conte's era of playing and his early management career, is how they get it done. They don't care. It's about the team, it's about the basics, and that's what he's going to do for most of the season. The one thing I'm quite intrigued by why Tottenham is it's been pretty much a steadfast 11. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's been one or two changes. I know Paris has just come in at wing back. Session Young's played there. The back three's pretty much stayed the same. I thought Basuma would have played a bit more at the start of the season. Maybe we'll see that uh, later in the years uh, as the season goes on. 
listen, we all, it's an entertainment sport, mm. but it's not the last game of the season. Tottenham have not won the league. It's, if you want to showboat and do all that, you know, in August, that, that's fine. But you're going to get smashed. Right. You're going to get smashed. And I think if I was his teammate, I'd be like, do you know what? Hey, let, save that until we've actually achieved something. Right. If that's when you want to do it, wait till we've achieved something. We're on, on to something decent here. We've got a good manager, we've got a good squad, we've had a good start. But it ain't me. They haven't just won the FA Cup. So I'm all for entertainment. But you're a, you're a side that's just been, been promoted. And you're rolling your Yeah, you've made 17 signings. You're rolling your sleeves up. You're at home. It's all a bit blood and guts and somebody's chipping the ball around. Yeah. Nah, you're, you're having it. Trust me, you're having it. And that's when injuries happen. Shank? Uh, listen, to, to Don's point, if you're a Charleston and you want to do that, fine, that's on you. Yeah. But no that you are going to get smashed. Right. So don't complain about that side of it. <laughs> From the time you start disrespecting other professionals in that way, you know what's coming. And, and as long as you're prepared for it, then okay. And by the way, with all respect, big money signing, it's Richarlison. He's a sub. Yes. It's Spurs. He's, not, he, he, he's hardly the kingpin down there showing off. So, I, I, listen, I, I don't know what, if Conte would address something like that. I'll just let it go. But... You know, Tottenham have got a long way to go before they are the showboaters in the Premier League. Uh, meanwhile, another Premier League game today saw West Sandwich for their first win of the season. 1-0 victory away against an Aston Villa side who have started the season very poorly indeed already. Some questioning the future of Steven Gerrard in charge. You take a look at it after four games. They've got uh, three points. I think it's the manner of the performances as well. They're now level on points with West Ham. Uh, Don West Ham getting the win, but is Villa the story here? Yeah, it is, Dan. And it wasn't a good game. It wasn't a good 45 minutes. Um, I think Steven Gerrard now is starting to become a manager that's under pressure. And I think it stems from the end of last season where their run of form was awful. Then you, you try and bury them results at the end of the season. You see the massive deflection as Fornals took the shots on. And they were better second half, West Ham. But you go back to Steven Gerrard and the form of last season, that was worrying. Then you have a pre-season, you try to bury that, then your open game is Bournemouth away on match day one, newly promoted side. If you're a Villa fan, you're thinking, right, get off to a good start, we can be optimistic, we can have a good start to the campaign. You lose that, it sticks you on the back foot. They only just got it over the line against Everton. So now all of a sudden they're looking at, they're looking at it, you know, form-wise, they're all over the place and he's under pressure. Not a good performance today. Then the next two for him is Arsenal and Man City, and Le well, the next three, Leicester, after Arsenal and Man City. So you wonder, actually, where the points are going to come from. It's tough, isn't it? The start of the season, and already the whispers yeah. have started, but I suppose we were here last season talking about Arteta in the same sort of tone, weren't we? And, and as Steve Gerrard came in and, and seemed to do such a good job of turning Aston Villa around, bringing in players, and, and you thought that this was a club on, on the up. But I, I'm with Don here. The first 45 minutes of this game was as bad a game as football as you could hope to see. And I'm including West Ham in on that. David Boyce did make changes at, at half, bringing Ben Rama on. And, and West Ham were by far the better of the two teams in the second half. All right, got a little bit lucky with, with the deflection and, and, and the goal. But my goodness, between the two of them, given West Ham's early season struggles <laughs> and, and Aston Villa, you just, um, you did wonder. I, I, as good as a turnaround as it was for, for West Ham, Aston Villa gave you nothing to suggest that they had another game. Aston Villa Chief Executive Officer Christian Puzzle looked last year like the cat that got the cream when he landed Steven Gerrard yep. from Rangers. Yep. Uh, built up a good CV at Rangers. Did a good job there, not always a lot of money to spend. Uh, up in Scotland, people talk about, you know, it's only Scotland, you can do this. It's not, not as simple as that when you manage two of the big clubs up there and you've had the problems Rangers have had. And so Poslo was almost purring at this arrival and, and the early signs were, were good. Mm -hmm. And as Shaq said, it might change. It might change. But this is not his first uh, big test because he's had them before, but his first big test really at Aston Villa. It was Jacob Ramsey, who was brilliant. He was out the team. He'd come on. They made the uh, Bubikar, who signed in the summer, was a big signing for them. Tyrone Mings, there's been a lot of talk about him, who was the captain, uh, been out the team. 
A lot, a lot of changes there and not a lot of results at the moment. But, you know, there's time to turn that around. But I wonder how long it would be. And Don just mentioned those next games. That's tough. Yeah. And then you've got a Leicester side. Who knows where they're going to be sure. in two or three games side. They actually played OK at times yesterday at Chelsea, but didn't get the result. And could sell players before the end of the transfer window. So, from Villa's perspective, they've put a lot of, I think, money and effort into this Steven Gerrard and his backroom team. <sighs> it would be a big... Big thing for Villa to turn around after you know seven or eight games, whatever it is, and say, actually, this is not working. We're starting to panic about yeah. Premier League survival, which is what they did with Dean Smith, yes. who was a good manager, got off to a terrible start, never recovered, and they outed them. You wonder, mate, whether or not they're going to bring in some new face between now and the end of the transfer window, which, of course, shuts on Thursday. We understand, though, Manchester United are going to pay $100 million for Anthony. It's a deal that we've discussed a lot over recent weeks. Suggestions are it will be confirmed on Monday. Uh, for more on this, let's welcome in, shall we, uh, Rob Dawson. Blurman at Rob. Manchester United have been chasing him for a while, and they really are being made to pay a big fee for the attacker. Yeah, um, you know, as you say, that they've chased him for a while. It's a, a, he's a player that Eric Ten Hag identified when he first came in. Um, but it's a, it's a huge fee. Um, we were told earlier in the summer that Ajax valued him at around 80 million euros. That the United thought that was too expensive. But fast forward a couple of months and as deadline approaches, that they're going to pay around 100 million euros for him. Um, it's a, a huge fee. It's going to be United's second most expensive signing ever, which, which tells you exactly how high that fee is. Uh, where does he fit into this team, Rob? That's a great question. Um, Eric Ten Hag wanted more numbers in his forward line. Obviously, that's going to happen now with Anthony. But he's also got Jaden Sancho. He's got Marcus Rashford, two players who he says he's, he's quite happy with. Um, you know, you would expect Anthony, you know, as a technical winger, to play in one of those wide roles, either on the right or the left. And that means either Rashford or Sancho is going to have to drop out. Um, you know, maybe Ten Hag is looking at the season and thinking, you know, there's a possibility you're going to play sort of 50 or 60 games, particularly with the Europa League campaign as well. And he, and he needs another body. And they're all just going to kind of rotate. But for those big games, particularly the games against the big six, he's going to have to pick his best team. And, and it's you know, debatable right now whether Anthony fits in, in, into that. Um, I guess you know, once he signs and once he starts playing, that's, that's when we're going to find out. I, I suppose a feather in the cap of, 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 of the manager in terms of if there is any uh, uh, question marks about transfer policy or who he's chasing and you know, if he can get the club, and, and ultimately it's not a manager's money, he just wants the player. Yeah. You know, he wants to play around, he wants to beef up his squad. And I think we saw in yesterday's performance off the back of an excellent uh, performance for the, in the main against Liverpool, and a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of headlines off the back of it, excitement and, and, and positivity about, about a good result after the start. But I think we saw yesterday again, although it was a great result, that there is going to be a consistency level. And, and so when you don't have consistency, you need a depth of squad. Because if Rashford, Elanga, you know, uh, Jaden Sancho are not, and they haven't been able to do it on a regular basis, and what we saw on Monday night was an anomaly from them, mm. actually. It was a fantastic performance, but, it, but it's out with the norm of their recent form. And so then you need to be able to go to the bench to make those changes if you can't have that consistency. But it is it's a hell of an amount of money uh, but clearly the manager and potentially club think that it's a deal that needs to be done. But the problem is, Don, I suppose what you've got happening in the same city at the moment, is you've got a striker that's come in, hit the ground running, scoring goals for fun, and then you bring in a €100 million Euro Anthony who hasn't got that same sort of pedigree. He's not that same sort of player. I'm not saying that at all, but you, you're just feeling like you're second best again already before he's even joined. Yeah, I think I think the worry is Dan. I think I, I mean the fees, the fee, and, and uh, you know I'm not I'm not too worried about fees. I, I I don't pay his wages. So you let Man United get on with the terms of the fee. They've, they've obviously overpriced for him, but he's a quality player. And for club and country, he only plays in one position. He plays off the right hand side, cutting in on his left foot, and he's an incredible player. But I said the same about Hakim Ziyech when he was at Ajax and he came to England. I thought, what a signing he's going to be. And they're more or less quite similar. Well, they're very very similar. Best positions on the right-hand side, cutting inside. He's got a wand of a left foot, Anthony. He's a brilliant player. But you can get a little bit lost in the Eredivisie and look at his numbers and see how good he is. Yes, he's done it in the Champions League as well. 
Then you bring him into the Premier League, that's a different test altogether. But what Man United needed, they needed quality signings. So all of a sudden, with Christian Eriksen coming in, the Casemiro one, I think has probably helped. I think it's helped that sign. I think that signing sent a little ripple across Europe where some players think, right, Man United mean business. So the Casemiro deal was done and they got that over the line, a ridiculously good player. Then Anthony and probably De Jong's thought, well, hang on a minute, some big players are joining. So they've got Anthony over the line. It's, it's what they need, Dan. They need quality and they're going to have to overpay. And they're in Europa League, so they're in dis different domestic competitions and obviously Europa League as well. So they're fighting on a lot of fronts. I don't know where it pushes Martial or Rashford or Alanga, who I think had a really good end of last season. Alanga pushes, probably pushes him into, into being a squad player, which is a little bit harsh. And then Jaden Sancho, his best performances when he was at Dortmund was off the right-hand side as well. So is he going to play down the left-hand side where Rashford was at his best? Yes, he's been pushed through the middle, Rashford. So you're looking at a group of players who are very talented, but they're still short of what Man City's got, Dan, in the likes of Erlen Haaland. He's the, he's the man that you're going to need where if you're in trouble like Man City were against Palace, Haaland pops up with a hat-trick because he's playing right through the middle. So... I'm a little bit torn. Brilliant sign and brilliant player, but how's he going to do? But what, before, I mean, the one thing I would say, Ma Manchester City are not, I mean, mm. Manchester City are not the target at the moment. I mean, long term, obviously, mm. they're, but they're not the target. It, it, it's a building, bro building process, building bricks and foundations. There's a lot of changes, both, at, both at, uh, in terms of the structure of the football department, the manager and the playing staff. Uh, and, and so... You got you have to you have to build that gradually. You don't got to look at Liverpool. You know it didn't come in and happen for Klopp and Liverpool straight away. It was a process of getting certain players out and getting certain players in, and then just tinkering with it every transfer window, or more importantly, every summer. Uh, but what United can't afford to do is have two 100, 100 million plus wingers sitting on the bench sure. and not playing well, and Jaden Sancho and Anthony if he comes in. So they're going to have to figure it out. But it's a building process. It's a building process to try and get in the back four and the, uh, the top four, sorry, and then push from there. Uh, meanwhile, Rob, what's the latest on Cristiano Ronaldo? We're hearing uh, rumours he could be going to Napoli. Yeah, um, Napoli are the latest club to be linked with a move for Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, again, United have maintained all the way through the summer that, that they want him to stay and, and that he's not for sale. It was noticeable, though, that, that Ten Hag's tone after the Southampton game, it changed slightly. He, he was pushed a number of times about whether he could guarantee Ronaldo would still be a United player after the deadline, and, and he couldn't go that far. He, he said only that he hoped he would stay and that he wanted him to stay and that he was part of the plan. So um, the, the tone has softened from, from the United manager. Again, though, you, you have to question where he's going to go. There aren't that many clubs who can afford him. Um, you know, even take away a transfer fee. That there aren't many clubs who can afford his wages. You know, Napoli could offer him Champions League football, but what could he afford the, the wages that he's on at Man United? That's debatable. Um, my instinct is that he'll probably stay, but you know, it's Cristiano Ronaldo, so so you never know. Finally, Rob, just for people maybe who haven't seen this story over the last 24 hours, extraordinary stuff being exposed in France regarding the relationship between Paul Pogba and his brother. Yeah, I mean, just an absolutely incredible story. Um, you know, for those who haven't seen it, um, uh, Paul Pogba's brother, Matthias, on, um, released a, a video on, on Instagram suggesting that he was ready to release what he called revelations about Paul Pogba um, about, that would raise questions about his place um, in, the, in the French national team and, and, you know, with the support that he gets around the world. Paul Pogba then countered with a, with a statement of his own that, that suggested that he was a victim of um, a blackmail attempt by what he called a, an organised gang. Uh, the, the, that's been put to, to authorities in um, France and, and Italy who are now investigating. You know, the, it, just an incredible, incredible story that, that almost seems to have come out of nowhere, really. Uh, Rob Dawson, as always, uh, thank you very much. I'm sure Rob and the rest of our journalist team are going to be busy between now and the close of the transfer window. That, of course, happens on Thursday. And to keep up to date with all the latest transfer news, check out Transfer Talk over on the website. Real Madrid maintained their perfect start to the season but were made to work for it as they beat Espanyol by three goals to one. But two of the goals coming late from Karim Benzema to guarantee the three points. As we welcome in Luis Garcia to the show. Uh, Luis, they were made to sweat but got the job done. 
Yes, Dan. Uh, we mentioned in the first half that uh, Real Madrid uh, played very well 20 minutes and after they relaxed a little bit, too much confidence. They start uh, stopping fighting, making the runs, uh, bringing the, the, the game to a highest uh, intensity. And uh, Espanol start believing that they could have a, a good result, that they could find something. And well, they found it with uh, Jose Lu. Once again, he was uh, the man of the match for me, for, for Espanol. He did a fantastic job up front, trying to hold the ball. Uh, good headers, fighting with two uh, amazing center backs. And, and at the end, I think that we have to give a lot of credit. And I'm with uh, Shaka on this one because Courtois, once again, saved the, the day for Real Madrid because that save for, from uh, Jose Lu mm. and that uh, uh, Coutuan did it with one hand. It was just fantastic when the game was on the side of Espanol. They had a couple of chances and that was the, the clearest one. So at the end, it was about Real Madrid being Real Madrid. They went until the end and the quality they have, they have a front. Rodrigo once again knocking to the door to Ancelotti because he wants to get more minutes with that cross to Benzema. Fantastic goal again. And, well, good result for Real Madrid to stay at the top of the table. Yeah, great result from Real Madrid. Rodrigo finding Benzema once again stepping up when he's needed. This was Real Madrid of the 21-22 season, wasn't yes. it? Yes. It was, you know, huffing and puffing and some control and then lost control. Then we're under a bit of pressure and looked as if they were going to throw some points away and a bit of quality was the difference. Listen, that Rodrigo cross was equally as good as the Rafinha cross we saw earlier. A little bit different, a little bit higher, but whipped into a sort of similar area, and guess what? There's the two strikers of the day. Earlier on it was uh, Lewandowski peeling off. This time it's Benzema peeling off, effectively getting the winning goal and sealing the deal before the third one went in. And that's the difference. That is that sprinkling of the magic dust, the difference. Yeah, you need the service into the box. Of course you do. But just watch him, he stood, he stood. He's watching and then he just peels off the defender. Of course, the uh, quality has to be in the cross. And it was. It was a brilliant cross. Keeper can't come for it. And that was the difference between the sides eventually. Lots of possession. But Espanyol huffed and puffed and not vintage Real Madrid, but... Who cares? It's three points for them. Luis mentioned how key that save was. Yeah. The one off his face. Best goalkeeper in the world. Right, no, yes. I, I don't think there's much question to it. Um, given what we've seen from Benzema over the last 18 months, given what we, he continues to show his importance for, for Real Madrid, um, while there are others claiming that title, I just don't think anybody has been more effective or bigger for their club. I've never than, known you not Courtois. been Manuel now at the top of your list. <laughs> I've all never, things, I've never all known good things come to an end, Craig. That's it. Oh, there you go. Uh, Luis, and these are some <laughs> of the games where maybe you look back and if whoever goes on to win the title, it's not a standout victory, but one that is just as important. It's three points. Uh, yeah. That's what it matters. I mean, uh, Real Madrid, and I think just Kerry mentioned, he said 21 to 2. They've been doing that for the past year, year and a half. It's true that they are games that, that you're not going to play with the flair or, or play in the way that you expect. But at the end, it's about getting the results. And much more now that everybody's talking about Casimiro is going, if the Real Madrid needs to sign players, well, they are proving that they continue being the same Real Madrid that we've seen and they won La Liga and Champions League last year. These are the confident players that they did the same thing last year and much more now because you are watching different players with Camavinga, Suameni, Ceballos in the second half, Rodrigo once again being important when he's needed. So at the end, this is the Real Madrid from last year and we, know, we all know what they did last, last time. Uh, One of the key moments, though, as we discussed, was that save from Thibaut Courtois. He caught up with Alexis after the match. Well, congratulations, another hard-fought win. We know that Espanyol don't make it easy for you. Um, you had a brilliant game as well. Just thoughts on this win and what stood out? Yeah, I think we, we started really well at the game. Uh, an early goal, I felt we were dominating the game. But uh, uh, then they had a long-distance shot uh, that I saved first. And after they created another chance uh, where I saved first and the ball goes to Militao. And then out of nothing, uh, it's 1-1, uh, a game where we the first half especially were dominating. And you feel that then the fans uh, Go, come behind them, and the second half it was harder for us to create big danger. Apart from the shot that the, the goalkeeper of them saved really well, 
They had a couple of chances as well on set pieces. They're always dangerous with their height. Um, so it was a hard game, but then in the end we fought that. Uh, we, we, we found that 1-2 uh, and uh, yeah, uh, it's important three points for us, definitely. Well, if it wasn't for you, it probably would have been a lot more stickier of a game. You're just in unreal form from last season as well. Uh, what are you doing? How are you feeling? What are you eating? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I Belgian feel, chocolate? <laughs> <yeah>, sometimes. <laughs> no, I feel, I feel really good and uh, uh, sometimes you have to do a lot of saves, like last week in nothing, so it depends a bit. Just unlucky that uh, last week you conceded the penalty that was uh, yeah, a stupid one and today also the goal comes off uh, a save of me against the bag of Militao, so that's a bit unlucky, but I always prefer to win and uh, yeah, just keep on concentration and uh, and now we we come uh, with a busy month of September. Uh, first Betis are playing amazing. It will be a hard game and away Celtic always a fun game uh, with their fans and their and the team itself. And then it will continue. So uh, till the World Cup, it will be non-stop. Well, you're perfect so far this season, three from three, um, as you said, but you get to go back home now, finally. You know you've been on the road for a bit. Um, how much of a difference does that make? And, of course, just mentally, are you guys in the perfect place to take on all these challenges? Yeah, definitely. I think you can see on a team that there's a lot of competition, but uh, people who, who play, they step in. Also, the guys on the bench, they maybe, uh, yeah, they can be disappointed of not playing, but they come in, they make a difference, and that's important. And you feel physically we're really good, uh, three away games in a row is always hard, uh, maybe not against the strongest opponents, but always in, in last year we lost here in Espanyol, uh, mm. we had a difficult game against Celta last year that we won this year more easily and Almeria, they showed yesterday why they are a good side, So, uh, uh, but at home it will be hard against Betis, they play really good football, so we will continue step by step and uh, yeah, hopefully everyone can keep fit and we can continue winning. Thibaut, congrats and thanks for Thank chatting with much. us. Good evening. Meanwhile, in Italy, taking you through what happened on Sunday, Atalanta with a 1-0 victory away against Verona. Meanwhile, uh, Salernitana with a 4-0 victory over Sampdoria. It was 1-1 between Lecce and Empoli, and Napoli can continue their fine starts to the season. They was held to a 0-0 draw away against Fiorentina. Uh, let's take a look at how things stand then. Napoli, of course, were perfect going into this weekend. That is now broken. There are no less than six teams sitting on seven points. Barcelona with a 4-0 victory, their first home win of the season. And Xavi spoke to Gemma after the game. We played really well and that's why we won 4-0, so 4-0. Well, this is the way. Uh, we need to continue like that. Uh, I'm happy, especially for the effort of the players. So they have talent, they can make the difference, many players. But at the end, if we work like that as a team, we can do some, some good things. I don't know if anyone had any kind of concern or doubt about Lewandowski, but four goals in three games, uh, he, he's, uh, he's showing that he's a, a top... Uh, yes, everybody can see the, that he, he made the difference uh, scoring goals but uh, I want to I want to say that uh, how how he pressed how he he helped the team he helped the players uh, the, he's very humble he wants to win he's a winner so uh, this, this mentality is what what we need exactly mm. what we need so taking a look at how things stand after just three matches Real Madrid and Real Betis the two perfect sides Barcelona of course dropping two points in the opening day of the season they remain Unbeaten. Luis Garcia still with us. Uh, Luis, overall, kind of a perfect day for Xavi. I think it was. I mean, there is a lot of talk about, a lot of uh, uh, people talking about if he's going to be able to manage all those stars, the egos and everything. But I think that he just uh, quoted with uh, Lewandowski at the moment. Uh, a player who arrived to Barcelona, he's 34, who has won everything and arrived there and shows that his is desire of, uh, of winning this. Uh, he's showing to the rest of the players. If Lewandowski is running, he's pressing, how not the other players, they are younger than he are not going to do the same. And when you have that mentality inside the dressing room, when you try to keep those players who are not pushing to the same direction, you got a fantastic connection. And now at the moment, it looks like everything is clicking. Of course, it's a long season. We have to wait and see if this is constant, if that consistency that we've been asking for Barcelona is there. But it looks very well at the moment. And there's still a lot of players who need to shine. There is a, a players on the bench waiting for their for the chance. We talk about Ansu Fati, who hasn't started yet. So players, Ferran Torres. But the uh, front three, the, the players in the middle, is just outstanding on paper. And they are looking uh, as a, one of the contenders to win everything this season. It's going to get a lot of goals, Craig. 
Well, when you think about it, last year they were signing, well, in, in January they signed uh, Adama Traore as well as Aubameyang, but he was, he's gone back to Wolves and at the, at the time when they signed him, he wasn't a starter at Wolves. Mm -hmm. They had Luke de Jong up front, uh, starting the season, not always playing, but certainly playing some part. That's a big difference. I mean, just a huge difference in terms of going to your bench, the quality that you can pick. We don't know, as Lewis said, how consistent this Barcelona team are going to be in terms of the way they play uh, against better teams. But what we do know is if they create chances, then he will finish them. Yeah. They, I mean, the, the past few years have proven both domestically and at elite level European and in some sense international football, although he doesn't play for the strongest Polish team. You create chances for this guy, it's going in the back of the net, similar to Benzema. So it's down to the rest. It's down to how they can do the basics defensively when eventually he shapes his, his back four up when the transfer window's done and we see who's left. How the midfield's going to look and how that front support line to Lewandowski is going to look. There's certainly enough options and at the moment you've got to say it's looking like Rafinha and Dembele with Lewandowski. But it could be one of four or five in yeah. there that are supply chain to one of the best strikers on the planet. It's looking good. It's going to be some title race in Spain, isn't it? As we say, thank you very much to Luis. Just a reminder, La Liga action continues tomorrow. And what a game at Mestalla. Valencia taking on Atletico Madrid. That's at 4 p.m. Eastern preceding that. Cadiz against Atleti Club. Both those games back-to-back -back on ESPN+. Oh, uh, what do you think of his shot? That is it. That brings it's, us to the end of uh, today's show. He was getting a bit of stick on the live uh, Spanish game. I don't what know. colour is it, Shaq? Uh, that we'll be is... talking more of this, I'm sure, on Peach. Extra Time, which is coming oh, up man. next. Uh, Don, right Peach. back with us to answer some of your questions. <laughs>
Again, we paid this money for you guys to rally. 99 was three, 97 was two and a half, which is a lot of lolly at the time. Okay, all right. But it's yeah. not so much the money. Right. Right, to tell you about moving to Celtic, it wasn't so much about the money, it was the club you're going to and the player you're replacing. Okay. Because Paul McStay was a legend there for 10 years plus, and he had retired Paul. Right. Because he had a, a dodgy ankle. So it's, it's, sometimes it's who you're coming in to replace. That can be okay. the pressure. All right. Yeah. But, but you love that pressure. I just have it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's where this story's going. <laughs> this is the end of especially uh, after uh, three games when I heard the guy shouting, <laughs> "You can bleep bleep off back to Chelsea." Right. Uh, yeah. Your, now, fa your family in the crowd. Uh, the wife. <laughs> 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 she, was, she was trying to put. She put a man. She tried. To, she tried to uh, imitate a man's voice, but I knew it was her. <laughs> and don't come back. <laughs> uh, would Craig or Don have smashed Richarlison? Yes. Each other the yes. ball in front of them. Yeah. 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 Everyone smashing. Don you smashing him? All day him? long. Oh, yeah. Okay. Two foot Don. All day long. Yeah. Proper one as well. I've seen, I've, lot. I've seen yeah, players lot. do that to their teammates in training. Me if, too. If, if oh, wow. you win any of the five sides comfortably and you start showboating, you will get smashed. Really? From your teammate. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Is that across the board? What? What he just said. What did he just say? <laughs> <laughs> I saw it. I saw what the He's too busy reliving Celtic. Do you know he only scored 15 goals you know, in his player of the season? <laughs> but never mind that. It's all about Paul McStay here. Yes, yeah, Paul McStay. So Paul was McStay a was a legend. You, seem, you keep bringing that up, not me. Okay. 15 well, goals. He just doesn't seem that much. I saw Mick Harford. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw Mick Harford. I'm not even going to bite. But <laughs> 11 were penalties. I'm not going to bite. 11 were not penalties. I'm not going to bite. Two in one game. Mick Harford. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Five and a six nil win. <laughs> Not quite. Yeah, so Mickey Hartford give the dish out the biggest oh my god to Alec Chamberlain, remember the goalie? Mm. No you don't. You're just sitting up. <laughs> You're just nodding your head. I haven't got a scooby. He uh, down the shins, stitches the lot, wow. big Mick just shrugged it off. Bah! He's a goalie. He deserved it. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Does anyone wish to change their minds on how many goals Harlan will get in all competitions? I never said anything. He looks to be well on his way to 30, despite everyone on the panel saying he won't get there this I don't season. Think that's correct. Who said I think that? That's I, I said he was getting more than 30. Really? Yeah. Well, let's. Let, let's pay attention to Don then, shall we? Don, did you say Harry Kane would score more? I never said that neither. I said Harry Kane would score more. I like the idea what Craig was saying before when he said if we go on a bar, the three of us might get chinned. I find that hilarious. I can imagine everyone going after you three as well. What? what, what, what I don't. What, what, why are we getting punched on? I've been out on the town with you. No one has threatened us. Well, that's what Craig, Craig said it. Oh, Craig right. said it. Craig said he's scared in case he gets chinned. No, <laughs> not over here. No, Craig, not over here. But in the UK, I used to get... Uh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people used to be yeah. uh, sharpening the face. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Now you're a couple yeah. of people used to say <laughs> me. Again, the wife. <laughs> Not true. <laughs> See, even when I get in the house, the dog's up and all falls out. Mm, here he comes. He kicks me tonight. Uh, the, uh, no, uh, I tell you, we used to. People got upset. When you, yeah. when you finish and you go in after a gig or whatever, not here, obviously. Yeah. Uh, some people, they can't let it go. Okay. Over 30? Harlan. But yeah, the over 30s, they're the worst. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Over 30, Harlan. I don't know. I, I don't remember. I'll stand corrected. I don't remember talking about Harlan right. Harlan, how many we scored. I don't yeah. know. I, I remember once having a discussion. I think Stevie was here and he was saying oh, so he, 25 he or something like that. Yeah. And I said, yeah, I think get over that. But I'm not a shaggy. Stevie said Arsenal. I'm were, sticking to that. He said Arsenal would finish bottom of the league. <laughs> That's right. And he's That's, sticking by it. He's sticking by it. Don, who had the bigger game this week? Manchester City with another comeback and Harlan getting his first hat trick. Liverpool with a 9 0 win or another needed win for United? Ooh. I'd probably say I'd probably say City and I being 2 0 down after the 3-3 draw against Newcastle a week before. Right. When they were 3-1 down, getting it back to 3-3 and then 2-0 down, you think, oh, there's a story here. I think everyone expected Liverpool to beat Palace by a big number, not nine, but a 3-4 or five. Bournemouth. So I'm thinking Haaland getting a hat-trick. Yeah, I think everyone thought that Liverpool were going to tonk Bournemouth 3-4 or five. I think that was oh, right, a given. Sorry. No, no, he, he, he said, he said did, Palace. Did, Don did say win. everybody expected Liverpool to beat Palace. Thought, Don said, yeah. I thought okay. I was hearing things. 
Oh, oh, Don's had a long day. Look at the state of him. Don, it's cold. Have you, Don, have you had a longer day than us? He's wearing three I, layers. I've been stuck with Dan Thomas for a long yes, time. Yes, mate. a long time. Yes, yes but I, I got in early and I watched. I got in early and watched Fiorentina uh, Napoli nil nil draw off the back of like Shaka said. The West Ham Villa game, which the first 45 was abysmal. Oh, oh no. no. Well, listen, you oh. can put extra invoices in for that. It's... I don't think you can. All right. Okay. I don't think that's. Yeah. That, 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 I wouldn't. Think so. I, 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 I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Those three. Yeah. Uh, what, City, uh, United, Liverpool. What was the biggest result? If you're listening on the podcast, this is Craig thinking. If you're on the podcast... <laughs> Craig's watching pod- old videos of Celtic goals. I am not. <laughs> that noise. If you're on the podcast, that noise you can hear is Craig thinking. Uh, all oh, right. Look, stay. What a player. <laughs> I'm not biting. Because right, people just want it. Just, no, I'm not biting. I'm kind of Man United. Man United? <sighs> yeah. Yeah. So before the game, before the weekend, I, I thought Man United of the big teams had the trickiest of the ties. They got over the line, so I'm going to stick with them. Don, percentage chance of Arsenal winning the Premier League is our final question. That is a good one, the way they've started. Um... No, it's not. Come on, Don, it's a simple answer. It's been a long day. 10%. 10% Don? 10%. All right, I'll have that bet with you, Don. Wow. I'll have him now wow. on the show. Wow. I'll have what is he bet? a wager with you. Well, I'm getting to that. Okay. So what's the bet? Yeah. Well, I'm betting you that <laughs> I'll give you any odds you want. Wow. Arsenal will not win the league. Any odds, Don? Here we go. All right, I'll have a, mil- I'll have a million to one. A million to I'll one, have A million to one, and I'll have a pound on it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> If, you, if, you listen to, if, if you listen to the podcast, that's Craig thinking. <laughs> you listen to the podcast, you need go to get on, out Give more. me a million to one. You listen to this podcast, go you need, on, you need to, get, to go one. home, have a look at yourself in the mirror. All <laughs> <sighs> oh, right, anyway. Uh, right. I don't know. Are you taking Come that on, million million to one? Yeah. Yeah, I'll have a million pounds. <laughs> <laughs> dollars. Dollars. Not cheap, but dollars. I'll have mm. a million. I'll go a million with you. Uh, and if you win, brilliant. how many is that he wins? He wins. I've put, put, no, put a million on. Dollars, no. What, what are you putting it on? Arsenal That's not winning. Right. Right. And if they do win it, yes. He's got a million to one oh my God, of my million. It's getting complicated. Dollars, because that's cheaper than pounds. What? Only slightly, the dollar strong at the moment. Right. Bosh, how much right. do I lose? I don't, I have no idea what you're talking I, about. No, no, do I. No. Million. If you bet it's a million, million, you've lost a million. If I put a pound on. No, no, no. He's, yeah. going, he's going a million to one. So if he puts a pound down. Yeah, he gets a million. And he wins, you have to yeah, pay him a million. Yeah, but making the bet, it was me. Well, you said any odds. Yeah, for me. Right, so no. you, you, put in a, you put in a million pounds to his one no, pound. No, I put a pound now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, this has been a long day. <laughs> Damn me. Uh, We're not going to win the league. Shaka, what percent? Most people get uh, carried away. What were you saying, Arsenal? Um, yeah, I, I think eight or nine percent is about really? right. Yeah. Wow, I'm surprised that high. Well, I think City are upwards of 80. Okay. At this point. Right, okay. City's at, uh, upwards of 80. Yeah. So then 8% is Arsenal mm-hmm. and 12% is Liverpool. So look at City is 83, Arsenal is 8. Right. Who else is in there? Liverpool Football Club. Hey, there's another. Oh, right. yeah, Liverpool. <laughs> Liverpool are 9. Right. That's 100 right there. Wow, Shaka. Everybody yeah, else well is 0. Blooming heck. I got it. Right, you got there in okay. the end. <laughs> Phew. Ah, good stuff. A million uh, pounds. That's it, you're done, we is are done. A, is, that a, is that a proper chief today? Oh, no, 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 no. It's, no. That's it's, a all, it's all from the lining. That's it's a Stevie Chief. Chief. That's a Stevie Chief. It's, it's meant to be like that, isn't it's, it? It's not, it's cheating. Eh? It's cheating. What's wrong with cheating? Go and buy one. No. Buy Chiefs. No, I'm not getting bullied into buying Chiefs. You should buy Chiefs, because the Chief can go with your shirt. Well, I'm not sure there's one but, out but there. But the lining goes in. Look at that lining no, as well, I, isn't that beautiful? I'm actually not sure there is a pocket Chief look out there. That. that will go. Don't deflect. I'm not sure there's a pocket Chief out there that will go with that shirt. I'm hoping there's not. What's that? I'm hoping there's not a pocket chief out there that will go with that shirt. Right, I thought you wanted to go home. Why are you dragging this out? <laughs> Who says we're going home? <laughs> Me, right. Yeah, that's it. Uh, we <laughs> will the music give up. Uh, the music we are back. I'm going we home. are back tomorrow. Are you back tomorrow? What day is it? Monday. I'll have a think about I'm it. off tomorrow. <laughs> off tomorrow. Wedding anniversary, everyone. Oh. 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 Congratulations, oh. Dad. Well, Cut the audio to well, everyone. Well,
wonderful. What a wonderful. What a oh, beautiful.